Welcome to the Friends with Money podcast, brought to you by Money Magazine, creating financial freedom for Australians since 1999. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are not recommendations, and further independent advice and research based on your personal circumstances should be sought before making an investment decision. Hello and welcome. I'm David Thornton, Senior Journalist at Money Magazine, bringing you today's episode of Friends with Money. Technology is constantly evolving, and as a sector, it's seen extraordinary growth over the past decade. So joining us today is our guest, Kanish Chu, Head of Distribution at ETF Securities. We'll cover the role of 5G technology in business, its benefits, and as an investor, how you can profit from it. So Kanish, uh, what exactly is 5G? My friends and family assume it's the same as 4G, just uh, 20% faster. Uh, is, it, is it more than that? Yeah, it it essentially is. It's it's not the um, it's not what caused COVID. Definitely, um, as as some 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 conspiracy theorists may have thought. Essentially, it's the the infrastructure system. So, like you've suggested, we're currently at you know four G. We're moving to to five G. Um, it, it's the tech infrastructure system that allows that communication and data access. Okay. So. This will continually develop as technology improves as well. So it may be that in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, or whenever that may be the case, you may have 6G and 7G. Mm-hmm. Um, but where we are now with, with 5G, well, what it actually means for us is things like, think about it in terms of like the, the rate speeds um, will become significantly faster. So your, your data speeds, um, the latency. So what that means is it's the time it takes for, say, a device to communicate across the network. Mm-hmm. That becomes faster as also that the latency drops. Um, and then you also find 5G can support more devices. Okay. So it can support you know, up to 10 times the number of devices per square kilometer. So if you think about it like that, you know, it's up to a million devices per square kilometer. So you can have more devices connected essentially to, to each other. And then you, you essentially can get also a boost in energy efficiency as well from the network specifically. So, as with a lot of tech, this will be an exponential improvement over 4G. Yes, definitely. I think you know, even we're already seeing the very basics of that. So, for those that you know, 5G is available in Australia on certain networks with certain uh, technology currently. You know, you, a lot of the, the phones that we have, um, still the majority probably don't have access to 5G. But for those that can, there is a, a vast difference. Um, but we're just sort of tapping into the benefits that you can get. And essentially, it'll transform what many could call the Internet of Things as, a, as an underlying theme. Mm-hmm. Um, so how devices can be con- interconnected with each other, that'll really have a benefit on us. So you consider the home automation area or the industrial um, automation or even medical devices, for example. They're all going to have a, a positive benefit from this idea of 5G. Is it is it a case of 5G is, is online and it'll take the applications to catch up with the network or will it be the network catching up with the applications? I assume it's not just a flick of a switch where one day we have 4G and the next day we have 5G. No, it, it's a combination of both. You're 100% correct. It's not one or the other. It will be a combination of both. Um, you know, currently, I, it, it's also, you know, from a, from a software perspective as well. Um, you know, the software needs to catch up. The software code needs to be written accordingly to ensure that, you know, it allows for greater bandwidth or the, for the use of the greater connectivity. You know, so it's one of those things when the car was developed, or was first invented, the idea of what the car would be used for was, was very basic. Once people understood that the car was, you know, what it could be used for, you started to see, you started to see greater applications for it. And the same thing with battery technology. Yes, it was used and it was a bit novel at first when it was first invented in, in sort of the 90s, early 2000s. Now they're developing battery technology for grid storage in the home or for use in semi-trailers. So you, you're starting to see applications in the mining and the resources world. And the same thing with 5G, just probably on a broader scale, to be Mm -hmm. fair, Mm -hmm. because you're going to see that being used as people start to understand how they can utilize that faster connectivity. Well, what impact will that have on various sectors, various products, various consumers? 
It's got to be pretty hard to forecast. I mean, if anything's difficult to forecast, it's ideas and applications people haven't come up with yet. One thing we talk about sort of um, thematic investing and this essentially is is looking at investing in a megatrend or investing in transformative technology. It is long-term. It's in an area of high innovation and disruption. So that's sort of two key things that you want when you're looking at a megatrend. You want it to be intertwined with government support and you want it to be, um, well, you want to have support by government, but also intertwined with demographic changes. Is that the Something distinction like, between a fad and a trend? The, those three, yeah, those three yeah, key look, components. I think so. So if you have, if you, to me, it, you break down into two parts. If you have a mega trend, and you identify a mega trend as being, you know, think something like transformative technology. If if a theme is supported by government, if it's intertwined with demographic changes, and therefore it's a long term, it's going to be long term. It's going to have a structural change. It's going to be, you know providing um, growth within an economy. Mm-hmm. If you have something that doesn't have government support and it's not in time with demographic changes, well, then that theme or that megatrend is not a theme or megatrend because a theme or megatrend is, by definition, long-term. Mm-hmm. Um, a working-from-home ETF that is a working-from-home theme is not necessarily a long-term theme. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a theme in itself, but it's not a long-term theme. Some underlying really good stock, but not a long-term theme. Okay. Something like Internet of Things, so not specifically 5G, because as you've suggested, and we talked about it, 5G could become 6G, it could become 7G. It's mm-hmm. the concept of Internet of Things, though, the concept of the connectivity and the increasing innovation of the Internet. Mm-hmm. And that in itself is a theme that is supported by government. You have government infrastructure, you have corporate support with that. You have demographics that are supporting that just through the use of the internet in itself, but how they use the internet, you know, from e-commerce to the society and connectivity in terms of social media, Mm -hmm. for example. And then you've got the medical aspect to it. You've got the manufacturing aspect, you know, the automation, the robotic side, all of these are starting to come in they are supporting that theme of internet of things in itself. So moving on now to the investment piece, what what businesses and, and sectors do you see benefiting from it uh, first in perhaps the short uh, or medium term? And then as we've touched on, what businesses and sectors can benefit from it uh, in, a, in the longer term? Yeah, so I think first and foremost, one of the the sectors and the companies that are going to benefit from this is semiconductors. Um, so the, the semiconductors, the chip manufacturers, and, and those associated with um, the manufacturing of, of semiconductors, they're definitely going to be one that will benefit from this particular area. Now, their companies, um, such as you know, we've got you know our tech ETF probably has exposure to a number of these, so. That's an easy way for investors to get exposed to not only semiconductors, but Internet of Things as a broad theme. Um, so that's probably at the early onset because if you've got, you know, faster internet, faster connectivity, well, as you suggested, you need, you know, hardware to support that connectivity to have faster hardware or, you know, if you've got speed running, you know, machines working harder, you need the chips to be more robust, to be stronger, to be bigger. And that's going to be from the semiconductor side. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned uh, your ETF. Uh, how how can investors right now uh, gain some kind of exposure to the 5G megatrend? So I, I think there are, there, there are sort of two ways that, that we can see. So we have an ETF called Tech. It's uh, the Morningstar, um, the Morningstar, developed market technology index, but it just focuses on the on the tech sector. It's country agnostic, which is really beneficial and what you actually want when you're thinking about technology, because whilst the majority of tech companies are going to be US-based, you want to be open to everywhere else. So that's where we're getting exposure to the semiconductor manufacturers. You're getting exposure to companies such as Microsoft, mm-hmm. who are going to be of receiving a benefit from the you know, the, the evolution of the Internet of Things or 5G, you're getting exposed to the software side. So 
that is probably an area I would consider as, a, as an easy step because that gives you, it's a multi-thematic in what I call it. So it gives you exposure to internet things, big data, software as a service, 5G, cybersecurity, all somewhat linked together if you're going to have faster internet. So that's a, and semiconductors is another thing that, it, that you've got exposure to. So I mentioned a company called Skyworks. Mm -hmm. So Skyworks, according to Morningstar, is one of the sort of what they view as one of the most undervalued tech companies within this space in particular. Um, now, Skyworks at the moment, it has exposure to the, the semiconductor um, space. And so that, that's one that, that you could probably consider. Um, but again, we've done that by the ETF. Yeah, so there's 35 names at the moment across the, the sector. Then you talked about, you know, so that's more, you've got exposure really immediately to from semiconductors, for example. But what about for the future? Mm -hmm. So you've got faster internet. What is that going to benefit? And that's where we start to see a, a real benefit across, you know, things like 5G's role in manufacturing. Um, so an example there would be sort of Rockwell Automation or PPC. So these are, are companies that are working in that automation, robotics and AI area within the manufacturing sector. They're going to have a benefit from having faster internet. So you essentially will be able to have a new generation of workers that, you know, really they spent all their life, you know, essentially with, you know, internet connected devices and, having faster internet manufacturing within itself is going to cater to those 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 new workers, you know, the ability to have smart homes. So iRobot is another example. So the iRobot is a Roomba vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us now are having those vacuum cleaners. I think I've spoken to you about that before as well. But if you have faster internet, that can talk, that vacuum cleaner can talk to other devices. It can talk back to the network. It can become smarter just through sharing of data. Mm -hmm. and how it's operating. So all of a sudden, you have a more efficient system at home. Um, you've got a company called Intuitive Surgical, um, or you know, Intuitive Surgical that does the, the mid-body um, surgeries or any sort of medical device or medical technology company. You will start to see the benefit they will gain from the use of faster internet. Um, just you, you, through, wouldn't, you wouldn't want any latency when it comes to surgery. If you've got a, a doctor operating a robot from the other side of the world, no. <laughs> you, you essentially want to have the fastest internet possible. You don't, you don't want the internet to drop and you don't want any latency. Um, so and, 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 we could, and we could be uh, part of that world sooner than we know it where we're having surgery uh, conducted by a surgeon uh, on the other side of the planet. Exactly right. So you, you've got that side of it. So I think what we've got is we've got the tech ETF that really focuses on the tech company. So the companies that are really involved in, in creating all that basic hard infrastructure to allow 5G to occur. So Qualcomm is, is another example there. Um, they've introduced sort of new, this is the one you know, the biggest chip maker. So it's between Qualcomm, Skyworks, um, NXP Semiconductors, they're going to be companies that are working with in that, what, I, what we would call, you know, the the foundations for 5G. Then you're looking beyond that, and we've got, you know, the ETF Robo, and that's looking at the industries that are going to really benefit from the 5G network. You know, and you even got, it's funny, we talk about this idea, but what about um, the company on the value chain of 5G? So if you've got 5G, and smartphones need to continually improve and manufacturing a smartphone. So you may not need to have exposure to Apple or Samsung. There's a company called Koyang Technologies, and they essentially do 3D inspection systems mm -hmm. um, on chips is, is one of their biggest things. So the 3D inspection systems, so it's a sort of an AI software, and um, what they've got is a really big contract, and they work closely with iPhone and Samsung. So when iPhone and Samsung are producing their phones, they're using Koyang technologies for 3D inspection systems because it essentially allows them to become more efficient in the manufacturing process. Right. So you've got sort of this idea of you've got the value chain versus everyone will just go, well, I can buy Apple. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. going to be the easiest way, isn't it? If I've got 5G, let me buy an Apple. 
stock. You, just, and you don't you have to. That. You don't have to just be thinking about consumer facing businesses. It's all the way. Along no, you don't have to buy Fang. Chain. No, you don't have to buy Fang, for example. That's the easiest way. Probably got companies that are really at the core of five G, or will be really benefiting or working around those companies um, that are going to be a benefit. So you can look at it from that perspective. I think can sometimes be um, a bit big buckwood. So you're in the the business of thematic ETFs. Should we expect to see a five G ETF anytime soon? I guess it's quite the applications are, are so unlimited. It might be hard to pull one of those together. I think, um, yeah, I, I think if you see five G, uh, who knows how how long that will last on on the shelf or with that name? But you may find that you'll have to rename it six G. Um, so. I think, you know, for us, we've got the ETFs that give exposure to the themes of Internet of Things, for example, or, and, you know, or give exposure to, to the underlying areas that are supporting this. So I think at the moment, we've got allowing investors to gain access to it. Never say never. You, you never know what will happen um, down the line. I, th- I think, though, for now, um, I, I think we're fairly comfortable with, with, with how we sit on, on, on our range. Kanisha, uh, thanks so much. We'll speak to you real soon. So, cheers, man. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Friends with Money. The article on 5G tech can also be found online at moneymag.com.au. Make sure to follow us wherever you prefer to listen to your podcasts, as well as on our Money Magazine social channels. Thanks for listening to the Friends with Money podcast. For credible, independent, and easy to understand financial commentary, visit moneymag.com.au. Please keep in mind that the information discussed in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your personal circumstances. Reliance should not be placed on any of the content without further independent financial research and advice.